Good morning. It's Earth Day, April 22nd, and today we are going to be processing some of our winter redded fiber um, for woolenizing so that it can be blended with wool um, at Bat and Kill Fibers in Greenwich, New York. Um, so this right here is the fiber we'll be working on. This is winter redded hemp that was harvested just last week on April 15th. And um, it was planted in May 20th, so it was almost out there for a full year. We just harvested it and we're eager to see what it looks like processed. Um, and this will be a two-step process. First, the fiber will be hackled on the hackler and then carted um, with a little hand crane carter. And the end result will look something like this. So let's see what it looks like. So I just put the fiber in the clamp. Um, the clamp rides a track through the hackler. I've left a bunch hanging over the top because we want to be more considerate of how far it's hanging down. If the fiber is hanging down too much, it'll have a tendency to wrap up in the machine, which becomes an hours long problem. So we just like to avoid that. And I also like to avoid putting too many more cuts in the fiber at this stage because you'll get the most use out of the hackler with long fibers. So I just leave this kind of margin hanging over the top, which is just fine. Um, and this fiber has actually already been cut in half once. So these stalks were twice as long as this. They were cut in half so that they could be dried in the dryers ahead of decortication. Um, but otherwise they're basically fresh from the field. So um, they're about to go through the hackler and we'll see them transform from plant material into true like raw usable material. That's scutching. So it's just removing any more of this herd because that's really like not good for the hackler. The hackler is also built for flax. So it's not made for a material as sturdy as hemp, um, but we just want it as clean as possible going in. But there's barely any hurt on it, so it shouldn't be a huge problem. So I like to include like, I can see there's a lot of like shorter fibers that um, aren't going to make it into this clip, this clamp, but it's sort of just creating like a line of best fit between getting the most fiber in the clamp and also um, hitting the, the correct length because you'll notice like this much material doesn't get hackled underneath the clamp. So we need about like that much of a buffer from where the clamp goes. One has been run through the hackler twice on each side, and we're gonna call that done. It's looking very beautiful. Um, so we've extracted the long fiber from the toe fiber from the most part. Um, this would be the long fiber or the line fiber, and the toe is in that bin right over there. It's a really nice even color on it, which we don't see from the field redded fiber so much. Usually that's like a lot blotchier with um, dark spots, but this is nice and pretty even and consistent looking. So I'm just gonna twist this into a couple stricks as they're known for storage at this time.
And making a strick is much like making cordage. You have two strands that are being spun um, the same way and then they're being twisted around each other in the opposite direction. And this is just a nice way to keep long fiber. And this would typically be spun, um, be wet spun at a long fiber spinning facility, but we don't have one of those. And actually the whole Western hemisphere doesn't have one of those. So this will just be stored for now. Um, this could make really luxurious textiles, linens, clothing, um, but it's also ideal for composites. Um, for making composites, you want clean, meaning herd-free long fiber. So this is pretty much as ideal as it gets for that application. What we have here is kind of two separated grades of fiber from that one original pile that went through the hackler. This is everything that managed to stay in the clamp um, across the four runs through the machine. And then this is everything that fell down below. So what I'm gonna do with this next is actually comb some of it out with the hand hackle and run it through again to just extract the longest fibers and make a few more um, line fiber stricks. And then the rest of the toe, the shorter fibers, about like this long and shorter, will be carded for woolenizing to be blended with wool and made into yarn. So these are all of the stricks of line fiber that I was able to extract from this last sample. And here is the toe and I already weighed it and it's just around five pounds and there'll definitely be some loss over the carding process, but our goal for woolenized fiber is five pounds. So we're going to avoid cutting these up and woolenizing them as much as we can to meet the minimum we need to. And this is what we'll be running through the carter um, to woolenize. So I'm not sure if it's visually evident, but um, this one has been run through the carter once. This one has been run through the carter twice, and you can see the fiber is a bit uh, more short and chopped up in the second pass. Yeah, you can see some of the more like these rustic, thick cut hemp um, fibers in the one that's only gone through once versus there's less of them here. So the final step is cutting the fiber to six inch lengths for the woolenization process because the wool that um, this fiber will be blended with is max like six inches. So we need to make something that's similar. So this is our woolenized hemp and this will be sent off for blending with wool.